Hey, good weekend to you. Welcome to the Leading Edge. I'm Jerry Anderson. Good to have you along today. You know Lisa Sebecki. She's right there. She's going to weigh in in just a moment. Coming up a little later on the program, got some great news for you. Looking to sell your house? Oh, I got great news. But I also have some maybe not great news too. What does it all mean for your wallet? We are going to figure that out a little later on today. But up first, ladies and gentlemen, I think I think you may be getting your taxes cut, Ohioans. I, I from what I hear, I, I mean, and they may fix our unconstitutional school funding formula in one fell swoop. I mean, can it get any better? Well, let's find out. As I welcome in my first guest, state representative. Lisa Sebecki, Democrat District 45 here in Toledo. Pandemic be darned, Representative. We're now learning Ohio has more cash than it knows what to do with. And majority Republicans are proposing an across-the-board 2% income tax hike. And what's not to like about that? Well, thank you, Jerry. I really appreciate being with everyone here this morning. Uh, but I will tell you, you know, it might sound good on the surface, but actually right now, uh, we don't know enough about this. Uh, we're halfway through the process, or almost halfway through the process, because we haven't even um, passed the, the budget out of the house yet. There's still conversations to go. Um, but, it, you know, unfortunately, it's going to really help the wealthiest Ohioans and not really help the middle and working um, class Ohioans. So I would say stay tuned and uh, as we continue to go through the budget process, because this does not have to be done um, until June 30th. So like I said, we're just, you know, almost at the halfway point of a long game and um, what comes in could always go out also. Uh, well, let me ask you this. If we push forward with the effort to cut taxes, um, couldn't the state getting COVID stimulus money, uh, as I understand it, the state can't cut taxes with that money, can they? Wasn't that a, wasn't that a stipulation of the money out of Washington? I believe you're right, Jerry. So this, there's, like I said, there's so much more conversation. Yeah. You know what, Jerry? Yeah. Really, what we should be doing um, is look to expand the earned income tax credit and make that refundable. Uh, but unfortunately, um, colleagues on the other side of the aisle don't really wanna have that conversation. So uh, I, I'll, I'm just gonna go back, let's just stay tuned. Uh, but something I do wanna talk about the budget that I'm really excited about is one of my house bills that I have is a bipartisan bill um, that could really help put people to work as they're transitioning, you know, looking for a new job or needing to find a new job. And that's the commercial driver's license um, student aid program um, that will help your truck drivers or for example, school districts that can't find bus drivers. Um, this is a great opportunity for us to be able to put Ohioans back to work. Well, there is also a proposal, I know, because your, your past uh, experience with schools and school boards and, and all of that. Um, where are we at? I mean, I know that they're saying th those who are backing the income tax cut are saying that they're also going to fix school funding in the same bill. And I know you're saying, wait and see, there's a long time to go on that. But we went down the road. We've been working on this for a couple of years. If you go back to Cup Patterson, the bill looking to fix the way, the unconstitutional way we fund schools in Ohio. It got through your chamber last calendar year, 2020, but uh, didn't uh, pass muster. Did, they just didn't get to it over in the House by year's end. Now you start a new session of the General Assembly. So it seemed to me this should be a foregone conclusion. And yet here we are now in April. We still haven't fixed school funding. Where are we? Well, that's a fair question. I know that there's been lots of conversations um, been having, and it's been taking place in the Finance Committee about school fair funding. Um, so I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that we can get this over the finish line um, in this General Assembly. I know that Representative Cup and Patterson had worked you know, diligently on this as the new um, sponsors of the bill in this General Assembly. Yeah. But at the same time, running parallel with that, we might be talking about budget, but running parallel with that is also the state report card. Um, you know, this is the perfect storm um, to have this conversation, not only about fair school funding plan, but also fixing that very broken state report card. 
the same time. Well, that's a huge issue for you. I know that the state has, being involved with schools on the little level that I am, I know that they have waived a lot of the mandatory state testing during this time of pandemic. I mean, shoot, kids are trying to learn on computers, on their on their countertop at home, on their bed. They're doing the best they can. Now we're getting more of them back into the building. Um, how do you weigh this, uh, Lisa Sebecki, in terms of reforming the state report card and yet giving taxpayers, those of us who still fund the schools, some level of accountability that our money is being effectively and efficiently used? Well, um, the fair school funding plan does not, um, uh, this, would not completely be funded through the state. There's still an accountability measure uh, that schools and taxpayers will still have an opportunity um, because there's still going to be that support um, that's going to be requested of the communities. No, I get that. Um, but you want to reform the state report card. So fold that into what do you want that report card to look like, be like? Can it serve education and serve the, the stakeholders of a district at the same time? Oh, absolutely it can. Absolutely it can. What it's going to do is going to remove those um, A through F uh, markings in there. Really a report card is a report out to the community about what is happening in your school system. Your current report card is very cumbersome. You People don't understand it. And it's really um, being very punitive to school districts instead of really telling that full story of what's happening. And so we can look at, you know, there's not a report on there in regards to mobility. Uh, we know in Toledo Public Schools, for an example, we have a high mobility um, issue there. We also have a high homelessness rate. That's mm -hmm. not reported on your school report card. So there are so many different measures that's going to be in this new state report card. And I'm really excited that we're actually going to have a report card um, that's going to be able to tell the true story of the hard work that our students and our educators are doing day in and day out with our school buildings. All right, she's working hard on that. She's working hard on the... Um... Uh, the whole American rescue plan coming through the state of Ohio through Columbus. She's Lisa Sebeck. I think she's also working, and boy, this got my attention, got a lot of our attention during the pandemic. The unemployment system in Ohio is broken, and she's trying to fix it. We're going to find out how when Leading Edge returns right after this.